The um, roadshows are a new initiative the Spark Action is to engage a wider um, group of people within the university campus. And so it's really neat um, that we've sort of explored the creative industries. And so tonight, welcome to Lester and Delenet um, to come along and have a conversation. And because we are a small group, it will actually be a conversation, which is really, really nice. What I um, thought I would do is, I'm not going to go through a whole raft of slides, but I guess just as a way of um, background, show uh, just two slides to think about as we hear um, Lester and Delina talk about the creative industries. And essentially, when we look at entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial businesses, what we want you to keep in mind is that most of the exciting, interesting stuff sits on the opportunity side. That's where we go, wow, what a cool idea. This could really work. This is neat. But we know that for businesses to be sustainable and to get off the ground, we need to have the discipline as well. And the commensurate discipline to sit alongside the opportunity is where some of the tension comes in. Because for those of us who are ideas people, the idea is fun and some of the stuff is actually a bit tiresome and a bit cumbersome and, and it's frustrating. So if you are looking at, and we hope you are, um, entering the ideas challenge and going forward into the business planning, it's definitely about the idea and having a sound idea, but it's also about thinking how do you get the resources around that, how do you make it happen? Because if people that had ideas were great entrepreneurs, there'd be a whole lot more entrepreneurs than we've actually got. So most of us have lots of ideas, but we're challenged to make them into businesses, be that either a social business or a commercial business. And we don't particularly dif differentiate in that you need the same set of conditions and characteristics to make a successful social enterprise as you do a commercial enterprise. So really all I want to do tonight is highlight a couple of things to be thinking about. And again, for those of you who are going to, um, and we, as, you know, again, say, please do, get involved in the Spark process. If you're going to enter that, then think about each of these areas. So definitely, number two, the opportunity, the idea. But equally important, what's the resources that you need to translate that into an actual business? Part of those resources are financial. And I'm um, sure Delina and Lester will have lots to say about financing some of these um, arts and creative industry organisations that can be challenging, but uh, financing is available. And what's the team that you need? So to be able to recognise the team that you need, first step is to understand what your own skill set is. What do you bring to the table? What's your knowledge? What's your expertise? What's your skill set? And then, looking honestly in the mirror, what are the limitations of those skill sets? What else do you need to sit around that that will actually take an idea to market? So if you're the person that has the technical know-how, you're the person that knows the, um, the marketplace, etc., that's great. Do you have someone around you who has financial skills? Do you have someone around you who knows how to actually take an idea and turn it into business? And um, Sonali mentioned the, the team builder component of the Spark website. Have a look there. So if you are thinking, oh, that's a great idea, but I'm not sure who I'd you know, bring into the team to work with me on this, that's a way of, of um, building your team. And then thinking, that's part of thinking about who you are as the founder. So what does your skill set look like? What does it look like in relation to the other people that you need? And that all of those components need to be well thought through. So yep, there's lots of emphasis on the idea, lots of consideration given to does this idea actually look like a market-driven, realisable um, initiative, but equally, how that actually happens is all of these other things. So I'm not going to go through these slides, but there are some additional slides um, that are available on the website and you can find. So if you are looking to actually backfill some of this um, information, then please feel free to do that. But it just seems like such a waste to hear me prattle on about the theory of this when we've got two great speakers who can actually share their experience of building businesses within the creative industries. So Lester and Delina, come on up and um, make yourself at home. And how do we want to do this, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, who wants to go through the comments here today? I'll move this over a bit so you can actually You've got a presentation? Because okay. <laughs> I haven't got one. <laughs> OK, I will grab on with mine. So you'll start with yours? Yes. I didn't know whether you wanted to... Can you We're going to sit back yeah. closer. This yeah. is so we can yeah. have a to share. Firstly, what they do, what their business is all about, and then some of their stories and experiences. Oh. It was broken Good. Well, pretend we didn't do that. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> the PowerPoint, it can actually just go like 
you know, it's just okay. images of us, so you just carry on. So hi everyone, my name's Delina Wihipehana and I am the creative producer of Atamina Dance Collective. And um, I prepared a bit of a presentation just based on the questions that I was emailed by... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Which was, um, I've been asked to briefly capture the company, what it is and what it does, how did we get into it, how was the company formed, uh, what is the business model, i.e. how do you make money, which is kind of a funny one, and um, what have been the key learnings in forming this company. So I'll just talk a little bit about us to start off with. Um, yeah. We're a Māori contemporary dance company uh, and we create and present Māori Contemporary Dance Theatre works in Auckland nationally and internationally. We're based in Auckland and the collective is made up of choreographers and dancers of Māori descent. We largely work with four core choreographers to create full length works but we also provide opportunity for other young choreographers from within the company to develop their artistic practice through smaller choreographic workshops, mentoring and small performances. So what's on the imagery behind are just various works that the collective have created over the years. Um, the focus of our work is often of expressing the experience of being Māori in today's world, um, conveying the energy and spirit of the Māori people, and our work is often inspired by Māori concepts, history, personal stories, whakapapa or genealogy, and commentary on cultural and current issues. So, how did we get started? It all began as a conversation between four of us around a cafe table in 2000. <laughs> Jack Gray, who was the founder of the collective, had graduated from the Unitech Performing and Screen Arts um, degree in contemporary dance, and he saw a sort of a gap in the industry in terms of the work that was being made at the time. Um, Taya was a Māori contemporary dance company that was making work in the 1980s and 1990s, and they hadn't performed since 1995. There was a group called Tāmaki Dance, which was kind of keeping up regular dance training for Māori dancers. But Jack saw an opportunity arising out of the fact that there were now so many kind of tertiary dance training courses around the country, the School of Dance, Unitech, um, they're kind of everywhere now, AUT, the university's got one. Um, so he kind of came up with the idea of a platform for emerging Māori dancers and choreographers to come together and make work. So his whole idea, and it still is kind of his whole vision, is for a collective of like-minded people to contribute ideas and work together uh, coming from a contemporary dance space, so expressing ourselves as Māori but not necessarily through kapahaka or the more kind of um, obvious ways. So over time the collective has grown from four members to ten core members and kind of ten additional dancers and the whole time we've really tried to stay true of the idea of working as a collective even though I'd say that out of the ten core members there's nine on the opportunity side and one on the discipline <laughs> side and that's me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, following our first show in 2001, Jack went overseas, so I took over managing the collective, although at the time we didn't even really think of managing, what does that mean? It was, it was just the organiser, the coordinator, you know, we hadn't really got our heads around any of that kind of business stuff. And like a lot of other um, contemporary dance and theatre groups at the time, we were project based, so we were kind of doing one project a year, you know. So do we really need to be a, have a legal status if we're just kind of doing, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, we really didn't think about things like legal status, we didn't think about compliance, we didn't think about the IRD or tax or anything like that. Um, but as we began to realise that the company was becoming more of an ongoing kind of thing, uh, we started to look into different options of legal status. We decided to form a charitable trust. Um, we had been operating as a partnership without realising that our accountant just had decided to give us the status because we had to be something. Um, so it took us several years to get, kind of get that right. We actually didn't form the Charitable Trust and incorporate it until 2007. So that was seven years it kind of took us to get the trust deed right, work out exactly you know, what we were trying to do. Um, yeah. But there were some key reasons behind us becoming a Charitable Trust. Um, some of them were that other similar dance companies were Charitable Trusts, um, that we were not for profit. Our focus really is the art and not business, so, we're not tr so it's kind of the art and philanthropic, not about making money, even though I've only just kind of realised this year profitability equals sustainability and all of that. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, because we're a collective, being a partnership or a sole trader wasn't really going to rec you know, recognise everybody's contribution. And um, 